First, I got to explain the choice of wardrobe, I suppose. <laughs> my name is David Collins, and for 10 years, I was a secondary school teacher, and my primary field was Latin. And it just occurred to me, since I was going to be running for the Senate, and the Senate was the deliberative assembly in the Roman Republic and later the Roman Empire, not that it was all that relevant after the fall of the Republic and the beginning of the Empire, the toga had great symbolic significance to the Romans who fancied themselves civilized. And the toga was the symbol of that civilization, that they had founded this brand new form of government. They had gotten rid of kings back in the sixth century BC and replaced it with rule of, by, and for the people, supposedly. Um, and they settled their disputes in a civilized manner, because they had the popular assembly and they had the senate. They actually did have a voice for the people in the government, which of course over the years became more and more overtaken by the wealthy aristocrats, of which I have never been one. But in respect of that, and by the way, when uh, politicians were running for the various offices in the Roman Republic, they would, war, they would wear an all-white toga, the toga candida, completely white, about as shining white as it could possibly be, because they had to look you know, like gods descended from Olympus. And they would even have a slave following with chalk to chalk up the toga just in case it got a little dirty while walking through the dirty streets of Rome. I have chosen the green toga. This green is also of deep symbolic and spiritual significance to me because I have felt myself to be uh, politically and spiritually green for a very long time since I was a kid growing up in Southern California and then later in Houston. Um, I would run for office naked if I thought that the Green Party would benefit from it. In fact, what am I bid? In this case, I'm a regular person. I have been in the trenches in the public schools and more recently in information technology. Just for the background information, for those of you who don't know a lot about me personally, I am 49 years old. I've lived most of my life in and around Houston, Texas. I graduated from Cypress Creek High School and Rice University. Went straight into public secondary school teaching for 10 years. Burned out on that in a most fabulous way and gradually drifted into information technology where I'm a fairly well-respected service desk analyst at MD Anderson Cancer Center in the Great Texas Medical Center. Just so I don't leave anything out, I'm occasionally glancing at my notes in case I forget stuff about myself. Um, as I mentioned, I've been spiritually a Green for a long time. I've been officially politically a Green. I think it dates back to 1996 when I cast that write-in vote for Ralph Nader for president. Ralph Nader and Winona LaDuke for president and vice president, lest we forget. But what really turned me in that direction, what finally tipped me over the brink, was the so-called welfare reforms of the first term of the Clinton administration. I thought that was a huge sellout to what we later came to know as the 1% especially the corporate elite 1%, because a lot of the corporate elite suddenly went into the welfare business and began to make it a profitable enterprise. And I thought that was a complete perversion of everything that I thought this nation stood for. Um, my concern for my son, who's going to turn 21 in just a couple of weeks, and the students that I had back in the 1990s also led me towards green politics. And I began organizing things in Houston in the mid-90s. And when there was actually the promise of a real Harris County Green Party coming around in about 2000, that's when I jumped right in and I was um, a bit, well, a part of that petition drive in 2000 that got Green candidates on the ballot in 2000 when Nader and LeDuc ran officially. And that was not just a historic time, that was a lot of fun. And I hope we'll have a lot more fun as Greens in the future as we continue to get ballot access this year in 2014 and beyond. <coughs> Oh, I'm also an avid cyclist, and I like consuming and producing beer. <coughs> so I hope we'll be able to grab a beer or two, perhaps, after the big fundraiser over at Cat and Nick's tonight. The personal is important, but it is in no way as important as the message. The fact that I am running for Senate just means that there is a placeholder on the ballot. Now, this may be embodied in the person of me, David Collins, but the message is what I'm out to get around. And my plan as a senatorial candidate this year is to go where the people are. Not that I want to neglect the great rural and natural expanses of Texas, 
but I want to go to the cities and the college towns in particular and start building the future of the Green Party in Texas, as outlined by our esteemed candidate, Dr. Jill Stein. Building the future means getting people while they are young and pissed off. And or old and pissed off will help too. But the more people we can get involved in this movement, the more it will snowball into a legitimate political, and not that we're illegitimate now, but um, something that people will take seriously and actually cover in the news media. Looking forward to being as much a part of that as I can and having you join me as much as you can as I go around to the cities and towns of this great state. It's a little bit like the Buddha. The Buddha himself is not important in the religion that calls itself Buddhist. What is important about Buddhism, though? It's not the person, is it? In fact, they say, if you see the Buddha in the road, your duty is to kill him. Because the Buddha is not important. The message is important. For me, the candidate is not the important thing. It could be any fool running for United States Senate of any shape, size, or color. But the message, the green gospel, or the green vision, as I like to call it, is what is important. And a lot of people don't yet even know that they are greens. They need to be brought into the fold. And I think we're the people who can do it. We have, if we have the power, we have the time, right? Everybody's got lots of time to go traveling around the state. And money, too. OK, maybe not. But we'll work on it. We will see where we can find these latent greens, the ones that just haven't realized that the two-party system has done them wrong and that it's time for a new movement to take shape. We need a multi-party system. We need a party that represents the hopes, especially of the new generations, the ones who have been taught about liberty and justice and equality as American values but have yet to really see it, or have come to realize that the system works against liberty, justice, and equality. So I want to take other candidates with me. This 2012 campaign, by the way, is a warm-up for 2014. I'm hoping that I will learn from my mistakes and be able to come back to the convention in a couple years and say, let's do it again, because we'll have John Cornyn to run against in 2014. Yeah. Now, let's talk issues just very briefly, because we don't have a lot of time. And as Greens, you all know the issues, right? I'm only going to mention about a dozen of them. Number one, I am solidly in favor of the Green New Deal as an energy policy and a jobs program. Two, stop military expansion and expansionism. In fact, let's get our troops out of the 73 countries where we now have military facilities, shall we? Yes. Three, we must, for the safety and even just for the future of this nation, we must invest in our infrastructure with the money that we save through the energy programs that we uh, that we bring around and, of course, through the savings on the military. We're talking hundreds of billions of dollars right there, all of which could be used to patch up our roads, bridges, sewer systems, and schools. End the absolutely psychopathic war on drugs and legalize cannabis and its cousin crop, hemp. Yes. End this insane war on women and women's health. Yes. Bring about a foreign policy and an immigration policy devoid of all the hypocrisy we currently see. Seven, remove the restrictions on the organization of labor. I mean remove. Eighth, encourage and promote sustainable agricultural practices, emphasis on local production. Number nine, protect our ecosystems. You knew that had to be in there somewhere, green folks, right? And clean up the toxic messes that a government and industry have left behind, bring about environmental justice for those, especially for those fence line communities that are having to breathe and drink their waste every day. Tenth, match up our army of homeless with the millions of vacant housing units, thanks to foreclosures and other uh, exigencies of the economic collapse of the last few years. Eleventh, and this is something you don't hear about a lot, Along the same subject as the homeless, homeless population, we need more than ever a nationwide initiative towards comprehensive mental health care. Yes, single payer health care for all, but inclusive of that, mental health care. Now, obviously, our case managers and our mental health practitioners are plenty booked as it is. 
So that's what, another reason we need that uh, free sec post-secondary education, especially in fields of mental health and social work. Because we are a society that is rampant with addictions and stress-related illnesses, and we have mental health problems most of us don't even know about, haven't yet been diagnosed, haven't yet been acknowledged. <laughs> and 12, 13, 14, and 15, education, 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 and education. Education for the challenges that the 21st century is going to present that is relevant to what we are going to face. Yes. Thank you for your encouragement. Yes, yes. One of the things that I have been doing with my life over the past 25 years as I've become more and more socially and politically conscious is protest. And I have allied myself with the Occupy movement. I haven't been out there camping. I have been sort of consulting and occasionally attending their events. And I really admire and esteem the brave souls from Occupy Houston and San Antonio and Austin and elsewhere that have come to the Green Party as a political vehicle for their aspirations. The Occupy movement is much more than protest, of course. It is the remaking of the future. It is the future that people were brought up they, uh, believing that they would like to see, and they are acting on it. Instead of just falling into the lockstep of consumer culture. They really want change, and they really are the 99%. Just most of the 99%, again, don't yet know it. It's a big picture movement, which will have long-term consequences. Now, as a senatorial candidate, I'm supposed to be able to think in big picture, long-term terms. It's similar to the deliberative aspect of the Roman Senate, or the more direct ancestor to our current congressional system, which is that of the Iroquois councils. For those of you who haven't been exposed to this information, remember what the Iroquois said when they made decisions at that level? What did they always consider? Seven, seven, the consequences to seven generations afterward. That's absolutely right. If we don't have some sort of body in Washington, D.C., that is considering those long-term consequences, then we are doomed to short-term failures and long-term catastrophes. So there is a certain place for deliberative policymaking, and that is the United States Senate. But it must be understood that there must be action of a more immediate nature sometimes. And this is why I would be in favor of substantially modifying the cloture rules that enable filibusters, which can tie up legislation and even effectively kill it in the United States Senate. This is not something that is a constitutional provision. This is just something that somebody made up. You know, the idea that we will not have timed debate in the Senate, that somebody could talk all day and even read the phone book into the record if it came down to it, just because they had a principled stand against something or they maybe stood to lose something from a profit-making enterprise because they were senators who had stock in whatever was going to be affected. This has to be changed so that the Senate can respond to challenges immediately. There needs to be a lot easier way of imposing cloture, making it so that people cannot hold up legislation. And 45 Republican senators, for example, or even Democratic senators could hold something so thoroughly captive to avoid policy being made, to avoid people actually being helped and possibly lives saved. Deliberation and compromise. I would like to think that I will never compromise my principles or the 10 key values of the Green Party and the Green Movement. Here, here. I would like to think that. I'll be quite honest with you. Sometimes the existence of a congressperson involves just a little bit of horse trading. But I will never willingly, how shall we put this? No, the key values are primary. You vote for someone like me into office, you are voting for standing on those principles, even if it's not expedient to do so, even if it may, may mean losing friends and influence inside the Beltway. Once in a while, obviously, compromise must be attained, and it will leave a bitter taste sometimes. But it is the only way that democracy functions effectively. Right now, the problem in Congress is the lack of a spirit of compromise on both sides. Uh, Dr. Stein can talk a lot more and a lot more articulately about how the Democratic Party has shot itself and its constituents in the foot. I'm going to learn, I'm going to study up on all of that stuff. 
But I would like to bring that spirit of compromise and long-term thought to Washington, D.C. I think I have run out of things to say, and I have also been informed that Great. my time is up. Great. But I will be available for questions. I would like to huddle with all of the candidates, especially the Bear County candidates, when we adjourn at approximately 5 p.m. today, um, just to talk about local issues and possibly a campaign swing through downtown tonight. And there may be beer involved. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.